Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I don't plan on being too long this morning, but I did want to stop in and talk to you, hopefully uh, inspire, encourage, empower and uplift uh, you uh, as you move along in this journey called life, as you hopefully pursue a greater version of yourself. Um, before I get started, uh, there are a number of resources uh, for ongoing opportunities, resource, free resources and other things listed in the uh, description box of the video you're watching, regardless to what uh, platform you're watching it on. Uh, just look in the description box of the video and there are some resources. I'm pretty sure there's something there for you. Definitely, if you're a person uh, that knows there's a need for change and there's a need for you to take massive action and you are consistently in some way, shape, form or fashion putting it off, uh, definitely enroll in the uh, Breaking the Curse of uh, Breaking the Curse of Procrastination. I think that one of the greatest impediments to uh, self-improvement, uh, achieving uh, a higher level of self is the fact that we consistently put off, we've been trained to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. We've been trained to move around and operate outside of anything that is going to make us uncomfortable. So we hunker down in our corner of comfort and we tend to live lives that uh, tend to hover around the barometer of average, mediocre, surviving, uh, you know, existing. Uh, none of those things are truly living. Living is living, existing and surviving and all that stuff is exactly what it is. Uh, when you're in a survival mode, you never truly get to live. Why? Because you're only addressing what's in front of you and the urgency of that. You never plan. You never take action. You never move to be something better. You're just trying to get through the day. You're just trying to get through the month and you will spend your entire life in survival mode and never, tr never truly really live out the fullness of what you were designed to do. And something I shared earlier, uh, and I'm going to share it with you now as we talk about what I'm here to talk about. Carol, I'm not sure what you're talking about. This is not uh, anything about what you're talking about. This is about self-improvement. So I'm not sure where you're going with that. But anyway, uh, hello, Kim. Hello, Jay. Jay. Uh, look, check this out. You have to understand the importance of what it is. Something I, 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 I posted earlier, and I want to put it out there. Um, I posted uh, something that, that said execution is a form of worship. Execution is worship. And I'm not talking from a religious sense. I'm talking about from a sense of honoring the divine nature of self as far and honoring the designer as God and understanding the connectivity and the responsibility that goes with the connectivity of being connected in a relationship with God. Because outside of all of the religion, no matter what type of religion you practice, that's your that's your prerogative. I'm not here to tell you what you should. But what I'm telling you, if you don't have a divine connection with God, with the most high, then there's something missing. That's why you have so many people who practice religion struggling, suffering, going through things because they are practicing the ritual without understanding the nature of the truth and the reality. And it's like, okay, you can know Bill Gates. You can know Elon. You can know who Bill Gates is. You can know who Elon Musk is. You can know who Jeff Bezos is. You can know all of them, but because you don't have a personal relationship, you have absolutely no true confidence that you can pick up the phone and call them and put in a request to meet a resource, to, to, to gain a resource and meet a need. But when, if you knew them personally, if you had a connection with them, you could almost believe that if you had something worth investing in, they wouldn't wait on you to call them. They would actually offer. And that's the difference between religion in and of itself and a true nature and a true relationship with God. I'm not 
uh, down talking any relationship uh, religion. I'm saying that there has to be something personal. It's good to have this collective thing going. It's good if that's that's what you want to do. But you better have something personal because there are going to be some personal challenges in your life. There are going to be some things that you go through that's between you and the divine. It's between you and the almighty. It's between you and God. It's between you're going to have to have that moment in your life. It's coming where you are going to have to be able to trust the designer. But in doing that, you've got to be willing to live out the design. Every design has a purpose. Nothing is designed just to be designed. Everything that is designed and created is created with a specific purpose in mind. Now, a lot of times things get misused. Shoes get used as hammers. And, 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 and on and on and on. But the true nature of the design is still, is still there. We also know the more you abuse something by doing using it outside of its true intent, the less effective it is at actually serving its intent. You keep using a shoe as a hammer and it won't be as comfortable and it won't be as smooth of a walk when you do put the shoe on. Why? Because now you've, you, you've misused it. You've mishandled it. And so it doesn't serve. So a lot of us are dealing with the fact that we've mishandled the gift. We've mishandled the talent. We've mishandled the inherent part of our being that sets us apart from anyone else. Everyone has it, no matter who you are, where you come from, you have it. I've, I, I've never come across a person in the thousands that I've deal with and the thousands upon thousands I've studied. Never come across anyone. I don't care if you've got autism on any end of the spectrum. I don't care if you got Down syndrome. I don't care if you've been told you're learning disabled. I don't care if you come from extreme poverty. I don't care. There's a gift. And then there is some scripture that's ancient and it goes back further than you believe it does does and it says that your your gift your talent your gift will make room for you and it will bring you before great men in other words your gift it's what's going to open doors for you your gift is what's going to put you in positions your gift but you've got to be accessing the gift you've got to be operating in the gift you've got to be moving in the gift and then there's an energy that comes with the confidence that i'm moving in the gift that starts to bring things to you call it faith call it the law of attraction call it what you want to but the universe is designed to respond to your energy and your action see just saying I believe something isn't real faith. Taking action on what you believe is the cultivation of faith. So, again, execution of one's design is worship. Execution of one's design is, in my interest, there's a, there, there, there are a lot who will say, especially in the Christian faith, that praise is the highest form of worship. Now, I believe execution is I believe living the life that you were designed to live is the highest form of worship, the highest form of acknowledgement of your designer. It's sitting up and saying I was given a job. I was given the resources through which to fulfill and carry out the job. I'm walking in my design. I'm living out my purpose. I'm rising to the challenge. And that is sitting up and saying I'm doing it. And this is the representation I have of the almighty. Now, that's just my opinion, but, 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 but I'm, I'm telling you, there's something about living in your purpose that changes things. But I, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on from that. I want to talk to you about chasing something. You know, I heard someone speak a while ago. And I said, man, that sounds a lot how I think. And I reevaluated and said, yeah, man, that's how I think. And, and it's real simple. There was a time I used to tell people not that long ago. And I still feel an admiration for people. But I used to say Malcolm X specifically. Because I could relate to his personality. I could relate to his struggle. I could relate to his unwaveringness. You know, Ma Malcolm X, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, just M Muhammad Ali were heroes. And I still have this 
unbelievable aberration for him. My great grandfather had a second grade education and did some unbelievable things in his life simply because he set out and refused to quit and refused to be held back by, by, by his past. And he did some unbelievable things. He laid a path and set an example for me. And I hold him in the highest regard among men that I've known. And you know, so I would put him in that category of people that I would always say is my heroes. But at the end of the day, if I had to pick one person who is that person who I look at as the ultimate hero in my life, it would be me five years from now. And someone would say, well, that's narcissistic. That's conceited. No, I can never be Muhammad Ali. I could never be Malcolm X. I could never be uh, 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 Dr. Khaled Muhammad. Uh, uh, other men I look up to, and they're, they're men in different areas and aspects of life who have killed the game and what they do that I've looked up to, but I can never be any of them. They were them, but I can be the best version of myself at any given time. So I can look at the man five years from now, not only admire him, look up to him and see him as a hero, I can one day become him. And then the beautiful thing that I love about this thing is that as I become the man five years from now, when I look at five years from now, and I'm the man that I see because I'm working toward it, because I'm fighting toward it, because I'm living and, and, and committing and refusing to quit and turn around. I'm literally taking massive action every day, living my life on full to become that man that I see five years from now, a person who's a better husband, a person who's a better father, a person who's a better person in handling and managing money, a person who is a better person in effectively reaching and changing the lives of people, a person who is building a legacy that will outlive him. When I get to that person five years from now, guess what I find? That five years down the line, there's another person that I have to chase. I'm never without a person to chase. I'm never without something to aspire to. I, and the beautiful thing is I'm in my lane when I do it. When I pursue that hero, that is me five years from now, I'm in my lane. I'm not trying to do something the way someone else do it did it. I'm not trying to represent and be something I'm not. I can't be any of those people. I can be encouraged and inspired by them. But when I'm looking at something that I personally can attain, it's the man five years from now. It's that. That's what I'm striving for. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm reaching for. It's to become the better version of myself that I see down the line. And I've caught that person many times over my life and then realized I had another five years to look down in, in, in a corridor of, of, of changes and challenges to go through to reach the next five to, to, to achieve that. I am simply the result of the successive pursuit of a greater version of myself. And I, I, I found out a long time ago that the things that I desire in life, I don't get those things because I want them. I get those things because I've become the person capable of having them. So if it's something in my life that I desire, I simply know that I must become the person capable of creating, producing it, or, or, or having it. I guess that's why I talk about procrastination so much because I see so many people that are gifted. So many people that have this unbelievable thing burning on the inside of them, but they won't move. Uh, whether it's the fear of failure, whether it's the fear of what people will think, whether it's the, the fear of the unknown, the uncertainty, whether it's the discomfort that comes with change, they won't move. And so they're sitting on greatness, resting on the comfort of their laurels and refusing to take action. Greatness requires that you take action. Building a lasting legacy requires that you take action. It requires that you run into it and, and, and see and, and experience some failure. 
That's a part of it. Failure is simply a teacher. It's a form of feedback that tells you what you shouldn't have done or what you should have done and how it could be different if it's simply one form of feedback. Success is another. But you've got to be willing to take action. you got to be willing to step out. you got to be willing to go beyond what is comfortable. Oh, execution, believe me, execution is a form of worship. See, there's, there's this one side that says, I know that scripture says, or I know that history says, or my mom told me that nothing shall be impossible for me. But there's a whole different thing when you sit up and say, I moved on it. I pursued it. And then what happens when you pursue it? You overtake it. You, but you've got to pursue it. you got to step outside of the comfort zone. Someone told me a long time ago, before it was even a, a catchphrase, I believe. Son, if you really want to truly live, I remember him. It was one of my teachers. Son, if you want to truly live, you're going to have to get out of that box you're in. And when you get out of that box you're in, you're going to find out that this world is so much bigger than you ever imagined. And it's yours for the taking. But you got to get out of the box. The box has given you a limited, limited vision and view of the world. And you are living your life based on what's inside that box. You've got to get out of that box. Yeah, it's scary outside of the box. But you can't reach what you, what you, what, what you desire without getting out. There inherit challenges that come with getting out of the box, but they just make you stronger. See, success is not for the weak and uncommitted. Success is for the ones who make a commitment to see it through to the end. It is not about how strong you are. It's not about how much you know. It's not about who you know. All that stuff is great and grand and serves a purpose, but it's about how committed you are to finishing. It's about saying, I'm not going to quit. I tell people all the time, I'm very careful about what I choose to pursue because once I choose to pursue it, there's a 100% commitment to seeing it through. And it can take a great deal of my energy and my effort. So I don't just jump on every little thing that comes along. I don't just jump on everything, no matter how good it sounds, no matter how uh, convincing people can be. I've got to be sold out on the fact that I'm, I can be sold out on it. So I got to be sold and convinced that I can give everything I got to seeing this through. And I'm not going to give up until either I get it or I, I, I stop breathing. That's it with me. People ask, how do you, how are you successful? Once I set my mind to do something, I'm going to either get it or I'm going to die trying. Those are the only two options. There are no third. I, I don't have a plan B. I'm going, now I may change strategies. I may move, in a, but the goal is if I say I'm going to get this, I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. The only option. Far too many people quit before the breakthrough. So many, far too many people sit up and don't realize you just had one more day, one more week, one more month. And you would have you would have been there, but you quit. You started over. You jumped to something else. And you've spent your life jumping from one thing to another because it got hard. Oh, hard is a part of the equation. You didn't know? There's no ease in the pursuit of greatness. There's no ease in the pursuit of elevation. There is only reward when you're consistent, when you're committed, when you refuse to quit. I, one thing I love is when I go speak at places that I've spoken at before, and there are people that are going to be there that have heard me speak, and I'm announced as I'm walking towards the podium, as I'm being handed the mic, I can hear people shouting, no surrender, no retreat, because it's always a part of my message. No surrender, no retreat. I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. I'm not relenting. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to take some bumps, some lumps, some bruises. I'm going to get some cuts. 
But at the end of the day, I'm still holding on. I'm still pushing. I'm still fighting. Why? Because there's a prize. The problem is most people won't embrace the process, but they want the prize. There's no attainment of the prize without there being a a, a, an endurance of the process. You got to learn. Man, I embrace the process. I embrace the challenges. Why? Not because I love pain, but because I've learned that when I endure it, when I get through it, there's a reward for it. I never come out the same person that went in. I'm going to share this story with you real briefly, and then I, I'll be out of here. I'm going to share this story with you. Most of you, if you followed me, you've heard it multiple times, so bear with me. But my grandfather was this teacher. He constantly dropped these unbelievable seeds of wisdom on me. And today, I still can't tell you why, as a teenager, I was so enamored with his wisdom. Because I look at I look at teenagers today, and they can't stand you. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to listen to you. They think you're dumb. You're stupid. You don't know anything. They got all the answers while they're crashing. You can't tell them nothing. So I don't know what it was about my grandfather that enamored me, but I wanted to hear. I would just be itching to get home from football practice or track practice and run in that house and sit up and hear what he had to say because he was going to give me something every day. But one day when I was 17 years old, I will never forget it. He said, sit down, son. And it was a little different tone in his voice. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. And I hope that you've heard everything I've taught you. But if you can get this one thing right here. Say so you won't ever have to pursue greatness. Greatness will overtake you. And I'm thinking and I'm waiting. He said, it's real simple. He said, in life, you're going to be in one of three places. You're either going to be going into a storm, in a storm are coming out of a storm. That's just life. You don't get to avoid the storm. He says, your, your initial thought when you see yourself going into a storm or in a storm is going to be to try to find someone to blame for it. Say, son, don't waste your time doing that. 90% of the time it's you. It's a choice you made to let somebody in your life, to follow someone's advice, to move on something you saw, it's it's going to be, don't worry about that. He said, your number one responsibility as a man is that when you find yourself in the storm, make sure you come out a better man than the one that went in. If you do, greatness will overtake you. So I embrace the storm, not because I like pain, but because if I can find a way to make the storm make me stronger, make me make me make me more resilient to teach me something, I come out better on the other side than when I went in. And that's getting me closer to the goal of becoming the man I'm trying to be five years from now. You don't get it, do you? I'm 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 I'm, I'm sitting up and, and I'm worshiping worshiping my creator by executing my design. And I'm pursuing the best version of myself five years at a time. I'm challenging. If you're suffering with procrastination, you need to enroll in that class. If you're looking for a way to grow stronger and take, take action and you don't know how to get it done, you need to reach out to me. I have a couple of uh, spaces open and no, I'm not the most uh, least, I'm not the least expensive out there, but I tell you what, I got a 99.9% .9 success rate. Matter of fact, everyone who's ever completed my course has rated it a success, has gone on to do crazy things. I just got an, um, uh, a text message from one of my clients from a couple of years ago when I got where her, her business was failing. She was in a, 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 a place and it, it, it was it wasn't looking that great, but she stuck with me. She invested in herself and she sit up and worked with me for about a year or so. And over that time, when we finally broke uh, away from our professional relationship, we kind of stayed in touch. We didn't talk often. Um, and but anyway, she hit me up this week and told me that her business is off the chain and she's engaged now. 
and she thanked me. But you know, and I I get that with with, with, with and, and I, I'm dealing with. I mean, I don't get the hey, you know, I'm this person. I've already done fifty million things. I got some people who have been very successful that came to me to go to another level. But I get a lot of people who've come through some things. And they're carrying it. And I show them how to put it down and walk and then jog and then run and then soar. And, and, and so there's something that you need to do. Reach out. If you don't reach out to me, find somebody that you trust, that you know is capable. You, we all need help. I have somebody I go to. You all, We all need help because there's a level you're trying to reach that you haven't been to yet. You need somebody to show you where it's at. Look, on that level, I'm about to get out here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. That is my challenge to you. On that note, I am getting out of here. Everybody, no matter what you're going through, it, it's not over yet. I don't care how dark it gets. You've been bruised, but you're not broken. You pressed down, but not crushed. You spirits delay, but delay does not mean denial. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Square your shoulders, hold your head up, see something clearly worth striving for. Focus on the positive. Get those negative people out of your life and then start taking step by step by step and watch things just start to happen. On that note, I'm about to get out of here. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. You encourage me. On that note, I'm out.